Now, I'm going to turn it over to Clark for the after show. Clark, it's all yours. Well, howdy, gang. How's everybody tonight? That was an interesting show. And uh, I'm glad uh, we got some uh, participants for the uh, my build. That was great. And uh, I appreciated those who showed their uh, warehouse from Bantam Models. And All right. see your face tonight. <laughs> yeah, we well, you face, know Mark. what, Mr. Hunter, I wish, you would re I wish you would check your emails and return emails to me, please. Oh, what did you send me an email? Oh, like a week and a half ago, and then again and again. And I also put in the chat tonight, and you don't pay attention to that either. Take a hint, Clark. <laughs> Maybe it's just you, Clark. No. I don't remember anyway, the emails from you. <laughs> I, I need the mail I, service in Canada. I just want a yeah, confirmation. I guess. For, yeah. Confirmation for Tuesday. Didn't recognize you, Clint. They're Clark without haircut. I know. I know. That's for the States, is it? Yes. Well, you know, it's hot down there. You're hoping well, I thought you were just hoping they're gonna let you across the border. No, 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 no problem there, baby. And apparently, uh, I guess as of April 1st, there won't be any problems coming home because we won't even have to have a, uh, a COVID test. Good. The the government is uh, easing the restrictions as of uh, April 1st, and uh, they said it's not even an April Fool's joke. Um, so uh, that'll be good. So... Uh, Ted, uh, the usual question, what's for dinner? And usual answer is? I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Um, all right. Uh, have we got anybody on new here? I don't see any names that jumped out as me as brand new or, or whatever. So... Uh, if you are new to the show, please uh, please say hello. No? All right. Uh, Al, did you want to talk about anything? Uh, Al no. Collins? Oh, okay. All right. Leicesters are available. That's what I wanted to. <laughs> yeah. So if you uh, have been following along with Al's, uh, some of us... Uh, Ultimation products. Uh, he's got the new slicer available, and uh, they're online. So, so Al is the next one up a dicer, trimmer, cut slices, <laughs> trims, and dices. It slices, dices, That's Julian what, fries. Make it a the slicer is great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Uh, I hopefully I'll get mine on. I can't. I can't take the stress of any more machinery right now. <laughs> so uh, trying yeah. to get trying to get stuff done these days is just it's really tough. Yeah, everybody's out of stock. Everybody's took me three weeks to get something printed. Took hmm. me twelve weeks to get blades. Wow. Just anyway, we'll all be speaking Russian soon anyway, so it's all right. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, uh, yet. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, Gary. Yes, you, sir. You got to change that angle, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, there was like a twin tunnel there. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's going on uh, down in southwestern Ontario? Well, Pat and I have finished the uh, WD uh, switching module, oh, cool. which is going to go on display in April. Yeah, I've seen the uh, track plan in that for that. So, yeah, it actually turned out really good. Neat. It's a uh, the way it's designed. It's uh, totally scenic. It has uh, five uh, structures on it. Before you get into that, explain to them what it is for those who okay. are. What, what it is, is a uh, when the WOD goes to train shows, we take this along and it's a... WOD is the Western Ontario Division. Yes. 
Is not right, Washington an old dominion? <laughs> Pardon me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when we go to train shows, we take this uh, switching layout with us and allow the uh, public and children to uh, do a little uh, switching. And we've uh, converted it to DCC now. So uh, the old one was an N scale, and this new one's an HO. Is it based on and the I think time saver? Yes. Yes. Okay. And it's going to uh, be uh, displayed, I think, uh, in the Kitchener show in April. It'll have its debut. <laughs> Probably won't run with a dam either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Pat, I just saw in the chat that uh, you uh, were the director of the show tonight. So uh, very good. Thank you very much. And I will say that your new mic works well. <laughs> you noticed that, Acre. Eh, <laughs> you did good, Pat. You did real good. Thank you. <laughs> First time, man. Yeah, you need yeah. to understand, everybody, that we spent like uh, four hours on the phone here <laughs> trying to work on <laughs> mic issues the other night. Oh, you know, poor people, kid. <laughs> just giving him instructions. You know, people don't understand how much it takes and volunteers to put on this little Zoom production. Yes, it does. And, uh, and uh, you know, if it wasn't for the volunteers, uh, such as Pat tonight, and Ken's been doing it for quite a while. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, and others uh, who have stepped up uh, from the past and, and uh, it, it takes a lot of work. And, uh, and I know Jim appreciates it. Uh, um, you, better sure believe it. you better believe it, because what <laughs> I know about computers, <laughs> this, this would never happen. <laughs> now, you know, Jim, we, we w do want to talk to you about this. We haven't seen the, the recent paychecks in the mail, but that's OK. Uh, <laughs> And, and you've got a pay increase too. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and that's what we're talking about, you know. Anyway, uh, that's funny. Pat, Pat, uh, Pat, Pat can tell you that he and I had an earlier discussion where I said, "Let's just do it and keep it simple, make it fun." Yeah, yeah. So I guess so. Apparently, there is no union here. Uh, <laughs> But there's an awful lot of other volunteers that do things behind. Oh the yeah, it's not yeah. just the it's not just the few that uh, help us produce these things. It's <laughs> all of the other people behind the scenes that work on the website and help us on uh, uh, posting the uh, the individual segments on the uh, YouTube and all the other work that goes into this. I think we have about sixteen people now. Yeah, that are, that are working on the show. Yeah, and, and we yes, we need more. Yeah, it does take a lot to produce this little show, and uh, um, it's fun. It it is, I, I think that's why we do it. Um, if I can speak for my own personal thing, it's because of the people that are here and the people that we have shared, and uh, and the modeling tips. Uh, if it wasn't for that camaraderie here, uh, you know, would it be worthwhile doing? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, it certainly with the friendships we've made here and uh, the camaraderie that we share, uh, we're pretty lucky to have a, a real genuine group of good modelers and, and modelers who are just maybe starting out in the hobby too. Mm -hmm. And we've also got a lot of people that have been in the hobby a long time, but then life and kids and <laughs> jobs and so forth interfered. And now they're coming back, and it's it's a different hobby today than it was when they were in it as young people. Oh, that's that's for sure. It certainly is a different hobby, even from ten years ago. We learn a lot. Yep. Yep. So, Clark, I'll take a moment if um, I can. We had a conversation, I think, in the casting about um, whether or not um, doing things in vacuum would be valuable. Oh, yes. Okay. I, I want to show right. you a picture here. So a few years ago, I got into this concept of so souve, which is basically you cook food at the in water at the temperature you want to serve it at. And what you do is you vacuum seal stuff and they chamber vacuum sealers better. And they had these damaged box damaged ones at the local uh, restaurant supply 
we have a huge restaurant supply. So I bought one. Uh, by the way, we use it probably three times, four times a week, easy to vacuum seal stuff. But um, basically what I found with it is- you like garlic. If you, <laughs> well, no, it's just, you know, like, 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 you know, my wife will make spaghetti and instead of making a small pot, she makes a huge pot and we <laughs> vacuum seal it and freeze it. So, but anyway, what I found with it is the first time I tried it, I put it in and I let it run the cycle and it runs a cycle down to where if you vacuum seal a piece of meat, it's just solid plastic against the meat. There's no air inside there. Um, it's very efficient. It's an oil compressor system. So it's basically a commercial thing. The first time I did it, I happened to watch it as it was going down and it got down to a point where the resin boiled inside on the mold. So clearly there's a level of vacuum that's a little vacuum too far. Uh, this was a, a third attempt because the second attempt I put it in and I only ran it part way down. But both times when the valve opens in the back and lets the air back in, the mold, because it was so light, would blow around. <laughs> so this is the third attempt. And what you can see here is that there's actually, I'm going to go back a picture here. What I did was, I, this is the mold sitting in here. It's a fairly thin mold. I'm casting um, sacks for a, for a warehouse. What it's got is it's sitting on a, a little piece of wood. And there's basically, this is um, just paper towel to protect the vacuum sealer. And then these are just weights holding it down. Um, and basically, you know, this is where you pull it down to for food. And you can see it's not down that far. But what I found is by turning it off, you don't let it complete the cycle. You don't hit stop, which completes the cycle. You just turn the power off. It just stops. And because it, the valve is a rele electrical release valve, it never releases. So you can walk away and leave it for an hour. So basically it sits under vacuum for this kind of low vacuum for an hour and it just sucks all the bubbles out. So the strategy here is you've got to sell it on packaging your your spouses because we're all, your wife's cooking for freezing because that way you can justify buying one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much are we talking here, Phil? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Excuse me? How you much are we to... talking about here? List price, they're like 900 bucks. <laughs> I mean, they're not inexpensive. Hey, it, it turned out that was why I, I went to buy the, the thing for the sous vide, which is like a plastic tub. And they saw those at restaurant supplies. And I asked them, I said, by the way, do you have any of this? Oh, yeah, we got one over there. They're half off because they were because they are damaged out of box or out of box. The box has gotten wet and they marked them down 50 percent. Um, from their price, which actually turned out to be reasonable. I, we bought it, you know, it's been 10 years now. And we, like I said, we use it a lot because it lets you, you know, when you cook something, like if you cook something and you've got leftovers and you look at the leftovers, and you say, well, I, I'll have those tomorrow night. Then you kind of have the same thing twice with this. You can just vacuum seal it, throw it in the freezer and have it next week. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of uses, but um that's justification of a lot of money for something, but it did work well for the modeling. It did, it, it, you know, if you have a vacuum system and, and you're doing resin, it is an interesting way to get all the bubbles out. And she have you ever tried to vacuum seal a diorama? No. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the problem is if you, if you run it down very much, it just crushes. It's, you know, because because what happens is it, it, so the way those things work is, you put the bag, you put a bag with something inside of it and it sucks all the air out of the chamber and then it seals the bag. So there's no air in the chamber or in the bag. And then when it opens the valve, the air comes back in the chamber. There's no air in the air in the bag and it just pushes the bag in with all the force of the air. So it's very tight. I mean, there's probably some very interesting modeling applications you know, if you wanted to really push some things together and do some specific things, you know, with using a vacuum, or I think about some interesting ways to manage some materials. Good idea, Phil. Enough, enough for today, but it did, it did. It was a, an interesting thought process. And quite frankly, the last three batches I've done that I've done that way with the weights and stuff, they've all come out just about perfect. No bubbles at the edges. I was getting, because the, the sacks are, you know, those little O-scale sacks. So they're, 
barely a quarter of an inch long in the long direction. And the problem is in, in the mold, I was getting little bubbles in the corners as the, as the resin went into the mold and they just weren't coming out. So when they came out, there was a little dimple at the corner, which basically makes them really hard to make realistic unless you're going to, and this actually seemed to suck those just right out of the mold. So works well. Phil, does, would it work with vacuum forming anything? Like if you use something heavier than a bag and so it, it doesn't actually have a, a plate in that it sucks down or anything, does it? No, it's, it's basically, here, let me show, let me show my screen again. You go back here. So basic, basically what it, what it is is inside of here, this is a heat, heat element that seals the bags. So what you, and inside here, there's a kind of a well there's one of their two plastic liners that go in here. There's one in here. I've taken the other one out. And then you've got this really thick, you can see how thick the plexiglass is. That's basically bubbled up at the top. So if you take both of them out, you've got a chamber that's, you know, about maybe seven inches high. And this bed here is about maybe 10 inches this way and 15 inches this way. So essentially what happens is you put a bag in there with whatever you want to seal and you lay the, the open part of the bag up here, the, the gray thing you see right there is actually on the top. The bottom here is actually where the, get, what gets heated. So what it does, it goes through a cycle. It sucks all the air out based on a timer. At the end of the timer, it stops for a second and then it seals the bag. And then when it gets done sealing the bag, it opens the valve and the air comes back in and it just compresses. So if you had something, if you had something you you wanted to seal that was going to take some while to cure and didn't need oxygen, that was a chemical cure, you could probably do something interesting, you know, into a mold or something. Um, like I said, the the only thing was that the resin boiled because you're you're such a low vacuum at that point. Of course, you could just you can adjust that by by how you do the. Um, by how you set the timer or the other thing it does have is this is a stop button. So when you hit the stop button, it stops and lets the air back, you know, it does the ceiling and lets the air back in. So anyway, it's an interesting kind of, kind of kitchen tool. Probably cheaper if you want to do vacuum for me to buy the one they sell at Micromark. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. You're muted, Clark. Hello? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, can you guys? Oh, you muted again. Yeah, um, I'm just on the phone. Uh, Pat, you uh, can play host for a few minutes. Oh, no problem. Okay. I, I actually thought it was more fun just highlighting Clark and watching him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> Put him in a vacuum chamber. <laughs> Ah. Oh. Now you're being bad. I know. <laughs> I thought he spent most of his life in a vacuum. <laughs> I think I better stop <laughs> custom live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So just out of curiosity, is is anyone planning to go to the uh, national NMRA convention in St. Louis? That is when? April? It's, in, it's in July. I don't know the exact date. It's always right, right, like right after July 4th. It's generally like the week after that. It has to be after Fool's Day. Yeah. <laughs> and mo model, model Railroad. It seems like the Model Railroad conventions often seem to pick the 
dates that are the lowest possible convention co or uh, hotel costs, right? Which is, you know, like right after July 4th, because July 4th was the week where everybody traveled. So the next week, kind of a low week. The few shows uh, that we've had over here have been well packed, I guess. Yeah, that's what I've heard. It doesn't sound like anybody's all that excited about going to that one. Nope. So, not cheap. And which one is it? It's in St. Louis. It's the NMR, you know, the NMRA National Convention in oh, St. Louis National in July. Yeah, they do it every year and yeah. just in the center of the country this year. And the kind of the always the argument was that you got more people to go and it was in the center of the country because you get people from both sides. I was just kind of curious. So is that a four day? I think so. I think it's four days. Larry are, Larry, are you going in the chicken business? <laughs> Not that I know of. Why? Well, you're starting to look like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Maybe he looked like me. <laughs> you, you, you shaved part of your face. Oh, yes. boy. I, got, I just got half done. <laughs> Darn oh, boy. So I, I killed the razor. I had to go plug it in. <laughs> boy, you leave for two minutes and the conversation goes downhill. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, it no. went uphill. Yeah. We, were all and making, by the, we were all making fun of you. Oh, I know. I heard that about my conversation. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Phil. Game on, buddy. <laughs> you want me to stop custom life? I just couldn't, I couldn't resist. It was just... No. No, uh, I got. We're gonna, we're, you, basically, everybody was waiting for you to talk, and you'd gone uh, to do something. I, I got to stop uh, custom live stream. 